my co-anchor Wally Aliu is joining us live from outside Hoover High School. Wally. Learning and positive vibes all around. I love it. Kimberly, this is actually our county's largest school district and the second largest in the entire state with 98,000 students and more than 200 educational facilities like Hoover High School where I'm at here today. Classes have wrapped up for the day here at Hoover. We were there during the pickup rush a couple hours ago. Our photojournalist met with Dominic Castro. Good guy here. He's the senior class president this year and he has some big ambitious plans for the class and he says he's hoping to raise enough money to make it all happen. Fundraising for prom, if we're able to get enough money to uh, rent a new facility like Peckle Park for a graduation, that's what I've had in mind, but I know those things are expensive. Got to have a good leader. That's good, that's good stuff, Dominic. I also caught up with the school's principal for an update on their exciting first day. Hoover High School Principal Tracy Makings joining us now. Hello, happy first day. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful day. I was going to ask how it went. How were the students' vibes coming back? I know there's just a lot of excitement. I think everyone was really excited to be here today. It's really a beautiful day. So we had the sun out, so students were outside during lunch walking around. We had nutrition break. Students were out catching up with friends, lots of smiles and hugs, lots of what did you do this summer. It was a really good day. You mentioned the sun. It is nice out here. Yesterday, the day before, not so much much. How bummed were the teachers? Oh, I don't know if the teachers were bummed, but how <laughs> bummed were the students and not being able to come back to that first day being on Monday? I think that we were all ready yesterday. We were all excited. You know, there's a lot of anticipation with the first day of school, um, but we were ready and it's okay that we paused for a day. It gave us an opportunity to be extra ready. And today when students came in, they felt welcome. They felt appreciated and they knew that the teachers put in the extra effort to make sure they were ready for today. A lot of excitement, but a lot of hard work ahead for you guys. What are the biggest challenges that you guys are looking at in this upcoming school year for these students, do you think? The most important thing is that we want every student here every single day, and we're going to work really hard to achieve that. The absenteeism rate across the county has been really high in the last few years, and we're making a lot of personal phone calls. We're sending text messages. We're sending mail to homes. We are really looking for students about connecting and having them get reinvolved in school and graduate from high school, and that's really what our plan is. And we want every single student who lives within the Hoover boundaries to know that they can still come and register. We have spaces for you. I love that because it really is going to be a community effort. It's going to take the teachers, the staff, the parents, and the students all together. Yeah, we all need to. We all need to contribute to this. It's not one of us can. One of us cannot accomplish this alone. But together, we can achieve almost anything. And so we we need everyone to support this process. And so, if there's any parents whose students are not enrolled in school, today's a, tomorrow is a great day. Stop by your neighborhood school and get enrolled. Tracy, thank you for talking to us, and thank you for loving the kids. We Always. appreciate it. Thank you. It is indeed going to take the entire community. Thank you to the principal so much for spending some time with us. And she's right. Let's get the entire community involved in getting each and every one of these students to class every day this year. All right, I want to talk technology now. We know it plays a huge role in education today, and it's a key to how this current generation known as Gen Alpha learns. We spoke to local mom and therapist, Dr. Kim Van Dusen, who is also known as the parentologist. She says the biggest difference is is this generation has had technology their entire life, meaning they have different expectations because information is right at their fingertips. There's just a different way that they learn now and a different way that they expect information to come back to them. Dr. Van Dusen explains that this new way of learning is actually more in tune to how children learn best is it's very visual, it's very hands-on, it's very kinesthetic. So kids learn the best that way, but now that they have a screen in front of them, a lot of times there's like a visual component where they're doing a word problem in math, and instead of just having to look at words on a piece of paper, they see people moving. <laughs> you know, this car is moving at this many miles per hour, and this car, you know, and so they see the cars moving and they can conceptualize it better. She does say the key here is balance and still valuing those interactive learning experiences that don't involve technology like being outdoors, going on field trips, and it's also important to set screen time limits at home. You gotta have that screen time limit, otherwise your neck is gonna start hurting, your eyes will start hurting, it's not good. All right, in the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna bring you an example of how resilient our local students are. For now, we'll send it back to you in the studio, Kimberly. Yeah, we all have to watch that screen time, don't we? Thank you, Wale. Yeah.